Folks, coming up a topic that took me a little while to get my arms around when I first started in the hobby, and that is KH or carbonate hardness. This is extremely important for our tank, so what is KH and why is it so important? That's coming up right now. A short disclaimer right off the bat, this is not a scientific explanation, this is just a simple hobbyist sharing the way that he interprets KH in a way that helps him. Now you may have heard about KH in the hobby with other terms it's referred to such as buffering capacity, temporary hardness or total alkalinity, and of course, carbonate hardness, the most popular name. I didn't know what this was in the hobby or why it was important, but to understand KH, we need to review pH because they are related. Hang with me, I promise this will make sense at the end of the video. Number one, for the very beginning hobbyists, our tanks have a pH. A pH of seven is neutral, anything under that is acidic, and anything above that is alkaline. Number two, and very important, our fish like a stable pH. So whether the pH in your tank happens to be 6.4, 6.8, 7.4, or eight, what's most important is that it stays stable. Now, of course, there are fish like discus that like lower pHs, more acidic water, and there are fish like African cichlids that like more alkaline water. But for the most part, if you acclimate most tropical fish correctly, they will adapt to the pH of your tank. Number three, very important, pH swings or sudden drops can be toxic to your fish, and a pH of eight down to 7.4 or a pH drop from 6.8 to 6.4 is bad news for our fish. Think about it this way. Let's look at a teeter-totter or our pH totter. On the right is our pH. On the left, that's our fish. As long as that pH stays stable, our fish are perfectly happy. But if that pH suddenly drops, there go our fish. That's bad news for the fish. Very important that our pH stays stable. Now there are many videos about the nitrogen cycle out there, but I wanted to point out one thing about it. Of course, we know our fish poop. That poop is waste. It gets converted into ammonia. Our pal's beneficial bacteria turn that ammonia into nitrites and the nitrites into nitrates. But here's the most important part. Nitrates are acidic and nitrates always remain in our tank at some level. When we do water changes, we bring the nitrate level down, but they are always in our tank, so there are always acids in our tank. Before we get on to KH, remember, fish like stable pH, pH swings can be toxic, and nitrates are acidic, and they are always in our tank. So why all the talk about pH? Why is that important as it relates to KH? Well, here we go. Why the term KH, what exactly is it, and what does it do? Well, why the name KH? Very simple, it comes from the German spelling of carbonate hardness with a K, and that is our KH. So what is it exactly? Well, it's a measurement of carbonates and bicarbonates that are dissolved in our water. Now, scientifically, that's fantastic, but let's use a more simple explanation. Very simply, what KH does is it helps prevent sudden drops in your pH. And this is why we had to talk about pH prior to addressing KH. Now, more specifically, it prevents acids from causing sudden drops in your pH. Now, what acids? Remember those nitrates that are always in our tank and are acidic? Those acids. So without something to protect our pH, those nitrates would cause our pH to drop. And of course, we know what happens to our fish. Think about it this way. Our nice blue planet has an ozone layer. That ozone layer protects us from the harmful effects of ultraviolet radiation from the sun. As long as that ozone layer stays there, well, we're all good. Now let's use that analogy another way. Now think about the earth, that is your tank's pH, and the ozone layer is your KH in your tank. In keeping with the same analogy, rather than the sun's ultraviolet rays, let's say that those are the nitrates in our tank. Those nitrates are acidic. They are always in our tank. They can only be removed with water changes. When we do a water change, we do lower our nitrates, but they do increase again. And in much the same way, that if we didn't have our ozone layer, those sun's ultraviolet rays would do quite a bit of damage to us here on Mother Earth. And of course, that isn't good for business. We'd be in a lot of trouble. Now in the same light, if we were to lose our KH, those acidic nitrates would be free to affect our pH, causing pH drops. Now the higher your KH is, the more acids it can neutralize. 
The lower your KH is, it can't neutralize as many acids. KH is not permanent in our tanks. There are ways to replace it. Water changes as one. But if we lose it, we know what happens to our fish. We'll get into how to replace that in another video. But remember how we said pH sudden drops can be toxic to our fish. So the KH acts as a buffer between our tank's pH and the acidic nitrates in the tank. A buffer. If that sounds familiar, remember how KH is referred to as a tank's buffering capacity. So let's review a little about KH and hopefully see why we had to address pH first in this video. So remember a few things about KH. Sudden pH drops are toxic to our fish and our KH is like our tank's ozone layer. It's the buffer between the acids and the nitrates and our tank's pH. So in the end, it protects against unsafe drops in pH that are toxic to our fish. Folks, I hope that is helpful. Again, that is a simple hobbyist way of explaining and understanding what KH is. Please like, comment, subscribe for future content. And as always, thanks for watching.